Welcome to LARP Academia. Last time we talked about what Vampire the Masquerade is. Now, if you're wondering what Vampire the Masquerade is and just send it up on this video, I would highly suggest that you check out our video on what Vampire the Masquerade is. But today, you're here to figure out what you can do in Vampire the Masquerade. What you will be doing for the majority of the game. After all, I did talk about last time how Vampire is not a game of uncouth hacking and slashing and fighting. No, no, it's an, it's an element, but it's not the main focus like many of those other LARPs. Now, Vampire is a social game, a game of etiquette and class. And Oh, you're wondering where you'll be spending your time. Well, you will be spending your time in a place called Elysium. Now, Elysium is a uh, haven for vampires. It's a safe area for vampires to meet. Now, this, this place could vary. It could be an abandoned warehouse. It could be a hotel room that's rented out every week. It could be an entire hotel, or it could be a giant mansion. Really... It depends on your prince and his or her connections and wealth and... Oh, what's that? You're wondering what a prince is? Well, a prince is a general neutral term. It could be a male or female, doesn't matter. And the prince is in charge of their domain. Now, a domain is either an entire city or a section of a city, depending on how big the city is and how much you have to deal with, but generally... There is only one prince per city. One prince in charge of all of the other vampires of the night. Now, your prince will uh, be the one in charge of all the vampires. That means they'll be in charge of keeping order. They'll be in charge of making sure no one knows what else is happening. They'll be in charge of keeping things safe and dealing with threats. They will also be the ones who have the final say in just about anything. Now, some people may say that, oh, this power is too much for one being, and to them I say, would you want that power? And most people then respond, yes. But then I ask, are you prepared to deal with the responsibilities that come with it? And at that point, most creatures of the night start to ponder and think about, wait, do I want that? What does being Prince truly involve? And, really, only few are cut out to be a Prince like I am. Now, being a Prince is a lot of responsibility. If you are, uh, if anything bad happens in the city, you are ultimately held responsible. And all the other vampires will be able to look at your city and look to see its state, and it is a direct reflection of you as a vampire. If your city is a total piece of garbage, then they might choose to eliminate you and put someone better in power. So you're constantly at risk. You're constantly needing to be aware of your domain. And in order to become prince, you need to have earned the position. You could have earned it through social machinations and guile. You could have earned it through brute force. You could have earned it through a variety of methods. Or you could have earned it just through... A being next on the totem pole while your superior did something less than intelligent and ended up suffering a final death. So being a prince is not always the easiest bit, but they are the ones in charge of your domain and in charge of Elysium. In fact, the prince is the one who will generally offer tasks to other vampires. You see why people meet, or why vampires, I should say, not people, but monsters after all, meet once a week or twice a month or whatever it is in order to deal with the threats that always pop up. Now these threats can take many forms. They could be other creatures of the night. You didn't think you were alone, did you? No. There are many other ghastly things. There are werewolves, ghosts, and far more. You might have to deal with these creatures as they encroach upon your domain. You may deal with them violently, or you may deal with them politically. It is your choice. But keep in mind that you are a vampire, and while you are stronger than most mortals, vampires' strengths come in numbers. 
So you yourself might not be able to take on a full-fledged werewolf. They are, after all, built for battle. And we're... We're definitely not built for battle, but we, we can participate in some fights. It's just that we're not as good as werewolves or some other creatures. So you can deal with threats you see fit. Other creatures not the only threats, no. Did you think all vampires would go along with one person, one prince being in charge of the entire area? Well, no, no. These, these other vampires didn't like that. And they could be belonging to different organizations, which we'll cover in the future. But these vampires could end up causing trouble. They could kill mortals in a way so that it's brazen and so that you're whole identity might be exposed. You might need to take care of them in order to not let this happen. Or they might even try to assault your own Elysium, which, let's be honest, we can't have that stand. There are, are also uh, other threats that you yourself can create. Past decisions, past issues. It could even be that your own ghoul starts running rampant or some other vampire's ghoul. Maybe they commit a ton of murders, maybe 10 or 12, and they just go on a rampage. You might need to cover up the evidence or deal with the ghoul or both. Maybe you need to cover up the evidence and deal with the ghoul. A tough task, I know, but many things might be required of you. In addition to this, sometimes, despite our best efforts, a few humans do catch on. They do realize that we exist. And then they come after us. Now, uh, when humans figure out of a vampire's existence, they either go crazy and become a conspiracy nut, die by us killing them, which is the most common thing, or sometimes they end up fighting back. Now, these humans that fight back are generally actually quite a bit dangerous. So we ha might have to deal with these hunters, as we call them. Now, during these conflicts, you don't just need to resolve it through bloody means or through uh, just nice political dialogue. No, 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 no. You have other goals in mind, don't you? You are a selfish creature, after all. You see, in vampire society, either you're an asset, you're expendable, or you're a liability. Now, if you're a liability, you are going to not be there for long. If you're expendable, eh, you might be there a little bit longer, but really, it's just, you, you, you don't have a safe position. You don't want to be in that spot. So you want to be an asset. You want to be someone who is indispensable. You might not want to be a prince. You might want to be someone who is the best investigator in your whole group. You might want to be the person who always has connections and knows what's going on with the other mortals. You might be a Malkavian who is able to tell of things that are to come, who's able to predict disaster and make sure that every other vampire is safe. You need to be an asset so that the prince and everyone else recognizes, eh, we can't get rid of this person. Now, despite you being an asset, you might have enemies, or you're trying to become an asset, and you have other obstacles. To deal with these, you can, during conflicts, have your own secondary objectives. We talked about the human hunters who go after vampires, the humans who realize that we exist. Well, what if you were able to plant some evidence, or lead this human along in a way so that it ends up harming your other vampiric competition. Maybe you're in competition with another vampire and you're competing to see who has the best money in order to fund the entire group. And the hunter just uh, gets a whiff that this other vampire's factory is run by a vampire, so they go and destroy it. Oh no, what a tragedy. And just like that, your spot's more secure than the other person who is panicking now because they are expendable and you now are a complete asset. You might also not need to deal with these during conflicts. No, no, no. We have Elysium, and that's where all vampires congregate and meet, but you're able to uh, pursue methods in any way you wish. You could spread gossip about another vampire that, oh, yes, I saw this vampire feasting on a mortal in a nightclub, and I know that this vampire wasn't caught, but uh, one of my informants, they were able to tell me that they saw, and they know what and they work for me. They understand what vampires are, but... Whew, I mean... 
That's a very serious breach of our rules. And then this goes to the prince, and the prince might end up questioning them, and then they might be able to follow, or have that person followed, and that person standing is shot down to rock bottom, while you rise up. It could also be just that you don't like that person, and you want them to suffer. I mean, we are, after all, monsters, so why not play the part? As you can see, there are many things that you can do in Vampire the Masquerade, but the most important thing is surviving. Surviving conflicts that come up, or surviving by securing your position. And it's never truly secure, because other players or other vampires might try to usurp that. They might want to be an asset instead of you and make you expendable. They might make you go from an asset to a liability in the blink of an eye. So you have to be constantly wary. You have to constantly play this game of allies, social machinations, and politics in order to make yourself able to survive the long night. Now, I hope that you have a better idea of what you can do during every night that you meet up in Vampire the Masquerade, and I hope that you live many more nights to come. Until next Sunday.